What's up? Just got through listening to Behind the Music and What They Desire. Check out all the planes and the vapor trails we got up around here. You get that a lot on these days, just everywhere. Yeah. You used to, if you had a big ego, think that they were doing protection of you. Try to make sure you're alright. Sorry, that's like the fourth Harley that came down through here. Um, uh, one guy joked to me about that. He's like, man, they can give you a ticket for running up with your car with your stereo too loud, but they don't give those guys a ticket. <laughs> like, damn, those things are louder than my stereo is. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know they are. Um, but, uh, um, a lot of times you think and you see because what happens is, is like my family explained to me, you project on others what you would do yourself. And so you give others the same heart as you. You give others the same intentions as you. You give them the same courage as you, same frailties as you. Mom always, you know, life is meeting ourselves. The deficiencies and stuff we see in others is actually a mirror reflection of ourselves. But also, the efficiencies and the beauty and other things that we see in ourselves, we accidentally do project that on others and it causes us great sorrow. Uh, we get a great sorrow because we expect others to have the same abilities as us, the same thought patterns as us, the same everything as us. We expect others to be in a sim similitude form of ourselves, which is not so, it's obvious. So if we're looking for others and then trying to find ourselves in others, you're going to get lost <laughs> because it just don't happen. See, God is greater than us, that's why there are others. Because God is great, not because we are great. We see the greatness in ourselves, or we see the flaw in ourselves, which makes us think that we're evil, wicked, wretched beings. I've never thought that we were born evil or wretched or wicked, and I never thought we were the devil. I never felt like that. I mean, I knew I had the part of me that's like, oh, that's the part of me I don't like very much. But uh, um, it's a part of me that I have to control it. My dad told me about my sexuality when I was uh, about 15. You know, you control it or it controls you. It's like, man, I wish you would have told me that at about 12. <laughs> it would have worked, but it's, hey, hey, better at 15 than not at all, right? You know what I'm saying? So you've got to sit there and you've got to understand this stuff. And you've got to work with it intangibly and applicably apply things in your life. Better late than not at all. Was, well, if your dad was on the ball, he would have told you at 11 or 12. Well, if he was perfect, I wouldn't have had any fucking problems, right? And he'd had no problems, and we'd all be perfect, and what would be the use in living anyway? We're just perfect. Well, that's the whole thing. You know, when Jesus gets here, we're all going to be perfect. Well, do me a favor and perfectly leave me alone. Because nothing is perfect. Everything made of God has a flaw. And so, therefore... The perfection is the heart that is grateful, that accepts all the flaw and sees the beauty in it. You go, g -g 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 get it? It was on Goodwill Hunting. Robin Williams said it. <laughs> that dog is cute right there, see him? <laughs> but yeah. No, man, I mean, if a celebrity says it, it's the gospel. If a crazy man walking down Main Street in Las Cruces says it, he's just a crazy man in Las Cruces walking down, talking to his cell phone and shit. <laughs> Yeah, you just crazy. Why? You ain't selling no books. Well, did I mention that at Barnes & Noble I'll have a book signing next week? Yes, Ralph's memoirs. Yes, Ralph. Ralph, me, yes. The young... The, no, I'm not young. I'm 46. I can't back that up. I'm not young anymore. Well, the musings of a young apostle who grew into a cynical old apostle and decided to sell books, smoke cigarettes, and talk shit about women. <laughs> Hi. No, that's Chris Hitching. Oh, I love the guy, though. But obvious. Simple analysis. <laughs> Brian Stewie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane? Simple analysis. Who else do you want me to analyze? <laughs> analyze this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But guys, it's <laughs> I'm having fun, man. Cut me a break, man. You wouldn't have fun with this? Seth MacFarlane would. Yeah, he did. He had lots of fun with it when he was doing his little analysis of it, doing little joke things about Jesus taking the lamp and make, hitting uh, Peter in the head with it, getting all the girls to sleep with him, going to the disco. You know, just being real cool, being a celebrity. Jesus came back, now he'd be a celebrity. Oh, hell to the fuck to the year. 
Where's my entourage? Come on, I'm not picking on her. You need an entourage. Jesus had an entourage, fool. Uh, what were those 12 guys that followed him around? Probably had him come, when he had to go through the groups and stuff, and they had to keep him, all the people away from him. Because they'd all grab on him. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? What well, should you want to know? <laughs> Don't worry about the future. Just focus on today. That sounds like Eckhart Tolle. Think he's been reading some Jesus anyway? Well, yeah. Yeah, if you don't live actively in the moment, you can pretty much not worry about tomorrow. But I see tomorrow. It, that, that movie was really interesting in a lot of ways. That one with uh, Tim Roth, he's playing uh, my grandmother's cousin, uh, Eric Von Neusen, Herschel Steinsteiders. Yeah, um, when he's talking about the mist and the way you see through this mist. And then, like, uh, I saw that, too. And I was trying to explain to this young man named Brendan at Johnson Park. And how when you're walking through the mist, you have alternate universes because we have free will. Well, no, you're going to do it now. That's just the book from his perspective. You're not getting it. This doesn't encompass everybody. This is guidelines for people that are, yeah, these certain family members writing their book. But we're all writing. So we're leaving it open because we don't want to dictate to you, here's exactly what's going to happen. Here's what you're going to do. I was going to be me, and it was going to happen, and it happened just the way it was going to happen, and it says so in the books. But the thing about it is, it's still open. They leave it open. Like Muhammad in the Quran, he leaves it open for us to write beautifully. I dig them. <laughs> I think they're cool. John, Jesus, and Muhammad, they're, they're cool. We leave it open. It must be open. Your page should be able to be written, not already written for you by people that would force their will upon you. He's trying to give you pages. That's why he tells you about in the Holy Quran that each child is an open, blank slate, ready to be written with the pen. And you give them the pen, which is a relationship with God, understanding that it's omniscient, omnipotent, and it works through you. You get it better now? You gonna be nicer to Muslims? <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you're all getting on my nerves. <laughs> Mormons have a certain voice and belief of this and stuff like that, but mathematically, no. They changed Joe's math so much that they're, yeah, it's, it's like a third grade thing. They've changed it back into what that pastor that was telling Joe that his brother was going to hell. They've changed it back into his mathematical equations. They reverted every, all the beautiful math that Joe was given just about to back to that third grade level. The Quran is on a whole other level than what they've done with the Mormon scriptures and manipulating them. There's still quantum physics in there, but you have to be able to come up and have the quantum physics random access memories available. Just sit there and go, here's what he's talking about. And then everybody goes, yeah, you're right. That makes more sense. And it historically lines up. Yeah, it does. Oh, well, how do we fight this? With another idea. No, it's not an idea. No, it's not an idea that God lives in every human being. It's a mathematical equation. It's not an idea. Your idea that only Tiberius and Smucks like that are God is an idea. A very bad idea. A mathematical equation about omnipotence and omnipresence and treating everybody as if they're that beautiful, blessed life that God gave them because it makes omnipresent, omnipotent mathematical sense is a math proof. You can hit it with a rock, but it ain't going to change. You guys get it? So, oh wow. Most of the vapor trails are dispersing. I don't know if that's good or bad, but they are. I need you. Do you understand? This is a calling. That's why they call it a calling. Many will be called, few will answer. But when the day comes and they, they start to answer, once it becomes apparent, that's when they all come a running. But that's all right with me. It don't matter to me if you came running up on the first day or the last day. I'm going to love you just as much as I love the... The, the first kid and the last kid. I don't love Patrick any more than I love Crumb. And Patrick knows that. That's why Patrick loves all of them so much. Do you understand? He's my boy. He can say, Dad, you do this, and they're going to take the kids, and we'll never see him again. Until, Son, I, I don't know. We'll see. This is all contingent on the group. I just have this strange feeling that my friends will help. I, not just my friends from General Dynamic and the Army and stuff. They, 
that's what got me. So I always thought I was crazy about the whole J-Lo thing. But then when I went on her little makeup site thing, when they kept suggest, they suggested the stuff on my Facebook and on my YouTube. I just clicked on it. <laughs> Why has this come up? I don't... <laughs> I'm going to get myself in so much trouble. I never went and listened to any of her songs. <laughs> no, I heard them, and I was like, they're all right. <laughs> yeah. I did the same thing with Janet Jackson. That's all right. <laughs> but if I'm going to go listen to music, I'm going to go listen to Nancy Wilson, Nita Baker. Um, uh, Phyllis Hyman, Barta Flack. Oh, hell, y'all know most of y'all do. They, they do. <laughs> they do, too. They do, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> she might have her stuff on that, but if she was going to sit down and have a night sit down, she would sit down and listen to Dirty Berta and Donnie, too. Danny, too. Sorry. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 You don't think she listens to Diana Ross? You don't think she listens to Greatest Hits Diana Ross? With a uh, good morning and heartache and and I reach out and touch and ain't no mountain high enough. Yeah, I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Got to let it show. There's a new me coming out. Now I just gotta see, let you see all my abilities. There's so much more to me. <laughs> I am gonna do it like you never knew it. It's not because of me. It's because of we. It's because of God. It's like uh, Pascal said. Man, it's our commentary, our uh, scripture, our life, our love, our uh, God, our living, our life, our planet, our, we're relatively connected. The man understood relativity back in the day when he was young. He's not a kid anymore. He ain't around. He was our uncle, <laughs> cousin, brother, son, all that stuff, all in one. He's cool. He's the Holy Trinity. Blaise Pascal. I thought he was an arrogant, obnoxious prick when I first read him. And I said it to him, I was like, this man is an arrogant schmuck. <laughs> I pronounced him an arrogant schmuck. And then Professor Barnes explained to me all the rest of the stuff that I didn't read. He made me read all the arrogant, stupid shit first. And then I just judged him and it went off. And then he pronounced me, oh, well, we are, what, you look at all this stuff, Professor B, man, look at him. He's an anti-Semite. He's an anti-Islamite. He's an anti, he's a dorkite. <laughs> He didn't have information. All he had was a bunch of bullshit and misinformation and crap like we have today in America. Oh, but then he goes to the mathematical wager and finds that it's all folly to try to disprove other people and prove yourself. You can't build yourself up by disproving others. You can't build yourself up by knocking down others. The best way to do it is to live a faith-filled, loving life that everybody has the same dignity, the same honor, and the same breath of life that was given to them by the same God. Only I think my view of God is more correct than theirs, but I can't prove it scientifically or mathematically, but I'll just wager that there is a God, which is what the Muslim does too, but he didn't know because he had bad information. All right? I love you guys. <laughs> How y'all feeling? You feeling good? We're going to do one more up and down Main Street, then I'm going to go head home. I got some cleaning to do. I got to love the dog. Got to eat some food. Get my grub on, you know, and all that good stuff. I think I'm going to have some spaghetti with marinara sauce. I've got some got plenty of bread and I've got some uh, Parmesan cheese. That's what I think I'll have for dinner. I know I'm having too much carbs. That's all I got. That's all I can afford. If I would go down and put it for food, I will do that tomorrow. Stop nagging me. <laughs> God, I love you guys. All right. Blessings and peace.